Hey guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History. Get ready to hit a home run. We're ready to do the House of Burgesses. That's right, sit back. Students in the social studies, lifelong learners, and cray cray on the internet. Let's see if we can't wrinkle your brain. Giddy up. All right, before we get to the House of Burgesses, guys, good stuff in 1619, I'm just going to give you some basic information about where the Virginia Colony comes from. And the Virginia Colony is a capitalist venture. It's set up by the Virginia Company under Sir Walter Raleigh, under the Royal Crown's blessings, to make some Momo in the New World. And uh, Joaquin Gons is actually the first guy left in the New World um, under kind of the guise of a military expedition in a, a place called Roanoke, where he starts working with the Native Americans to learn smelting techniques on copper giving England a huge advantage over Spain and the wars that they're having, reducing the time it took to smelt copper, smelt, I said smelt, um, from 16 weeks to four days. So right away the colony is proving to be kind of, you know, profitable and useful. So then Sir Walter Raleigh sends out John White with uh, about 100, 115 settlers. In 1584 to, to settle the New World. And they actually settle in Roanoke. Um, John White then goes back to England for supplies. But when he comes back in 1590 to Roanoke, everybody's gone. Uh, Croatian is put onto a tree. That's a local Native American tribe. And nobody really knows what happened to those, I think it was about 115 settlers. Men, women, and children just kind of poofed into the sky. So this is the founding of the Virginia colony. So uh, the next big settlement becomes Jamestown, right around, what, 1607, 1608, the founding of Jamestown, which becomes the first permanent settlement by uh, Great Britain in the New World. So let's get to the House of Burgesses. So, in the beginning, guys, times aren't that good in Jamestown. In fact, they're not going to be good for a very long time. But in the beginning of the colony, there's a lot of disease and Native American attacks. Malaria, specifically, is a disease. And hunger, starvation, people are dying, cats are eating dogs, it's not good. People are not lining up to come in. And if people aren't coming in, you can't really have exports and you can't kind of grow food and do the types of things that are going to make you a profitable colony. So, therefore, the uh, Virginia Company sets up a great charter, which is basically basically kind of like a like a, you know a sales ad for the new world and what it says is that if you get there you know if you pay your own way you get 50 acres of land you get a voice in your new government and that's what's going to be the house of burgesses and in 1619 that is set up um, there is a lower house that lower house and this congress uh, or the Virginia Assembly is the House of Burgesses. First, it's made up of 22 members, uh, two elected representatives from 11 of the settlements. And then there's an upper house. First, it's called the Gentry, and they change their name later, but this is basically the Senate. And they're appointed um, from the you know, colonial power of Great Britain. And there's also a royal governor that's appointed. So this isn't by any means of the imagination pure you know, republicanism. There's oversight and there's controls from the monarch. But it's the idea, and here we go, you want to write this down, it's the idea that this is self-government. For the first time ever in the New World, settlers, or at least white men, have the ability to taste the sweet, sweet, you know, uh, flavor of M&Ms. And this is the M&M concept that I teach in class, that if you'd never have M&Ms, you don't know how good they taste. And what basically the King of England through this charter and the Virginia Company have done is they have given us a bag of M&Ms and we're never going to want to let go and eventually we're going to want to own the M&M factory. Other colonies, they didn't do this. In the New World, yes, and in the Americas, but Spanish colonies don't do that. The French colonies didn't have representative bodies because it gives the people a voice. And if you give the people a voice, the voice is only going to want to grow louder, not softer. So, the House of Burgesses, guys, 1619 to 1776, the first body of representation in the New World. And I'm not going to lie to you, it didn't go very well in the beginning. There was malaria, there was a huge Indian attack on uh, March 22nd of 1622. 400 people were massacred. And because of that kind of crisis atmosphere, the voice of the people was always subjected to the will of the upper house, the governor, hence the king in Great Britain. So I'm not talking about really an actuality of representational democracy, but I'm talking about a taste, and it's the taste. Like, once you taste something, you really never forget about how good it tastes. So, there you go. We're done, guys. That's it. The House of Burgesses. Interesting fact. 
If you were absent from service, if you were a representative, you were fined 300 pounds of tobacco for every 24 hours you weren't there, and you had to say my bad to all your peeps to get back in. There you go. Check out the links below. We have other eight great EDU channels that you should be checking out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, WTH, what are you doing? All right, guys, we'll see you next time where attention goes. Energy flows.